Hi everybody. How you guys doing today? Yes, I'm sitting in the corner in my favorite spot in my chair. And today is my day off. I um there has been something that I've been thinking about and um I just wanted to encourage a few people today. Hey, hello. How you doing? I just want to encourage a few people today and it's about relationships and friendships and dating and all that kind of stuff. And um, I guess I just felt led to talk about it because in this day and time, man, it's a lot of people that are searching for love. And they're doing it at the expense of their character and their morals. And they're doing it at the expense of allowing someone to come into their lives and just so they don't be alone. And so they don't be alone. They just tend to basically accept someone that is have basically have doing it in their lives and you know and i'm speaking from experience i've been in eight re year relationship before i've been in a three-year relationship before i just like to be transparent with people and um i am now about to be bar embark upon my five years of celibacy in august on august 16th it'll be five years that i've been celibate that alone is a blessing and you know even yesterday talking to a couple of friends and then on sunday um, or people that I have been friends with for a long time. And even when I accepted Christ, one of those people was my ex, to be honest with you. And I don't really talk to him a lot. Um, and I wasn't going to play with that spirit trying to, trying to hold on to something and knowing I wasn't completely here. But now that it has been at least four years, I can get on the phone and talk to him and minister to him and tell him that his life is no longer his own and tell him that God has a plan for him and that he needs to give his life to Christ because if he don't, he got to spend eternity somewhere. So I know that I'm healed from those relationships, but let me let me encourage those of you that may be seeking partnership. This is go this could go for men or women. And from coming from a person that doesn't have an issue with getting someone cuz I walk out the door and look crusty and they still trying to holler and I'm not trying to be funny or nor am I being arrogant. But it's I, I'm a very independent person. I have my own home. I don't have children. I'm not bad looking on the eyes. I have my own business. I'm in ministry. I have a lot of things going for me. And maybe your internet, sweetie, but mine is totally fine. It's not telling me it's breaking up. But um, this is what my experience have been, I have had guys to pursue me, um, two in particular, since I have, since I left that eight year relationship. And I'm going to be transparent with you guys really quick. The first one, I actually dated him for about a year and a half. Really good guy, um, but did not, he wasn't for me. He wasn't going after God. Um, he had a lot of things going on in his life and let me tell you what I did although when I first met him he told me he was saved but let me tell you something sometimes people can say they they're safe and they don't have a relationship with God and what I mean by that it's not being judgmental but the Bible says we're known by the fruit we bear and over time you know his job Okay, well, maybe this will save, and then maybe it, because it's not choppy on my end, but, or maybe y'all want me to come back on. Let's try to get through it, and if it's choppy when I'm done and I'm trying to replay it, I will actually do it over. But I'm um, saying all of this to say that within that process of me um, giving him a chance i hadn't even talked to anyone else in between my breakup of eight years and i let a two-year span go by before i even gave somebody my phone number because i really wanted to be healed it wasn't that i was being unforgiving but i knew that i was going after god i didn't want anything to distract that and i do believe that you cannot move forward in another relationship when you still dealing with brokenness from the previous one how can you be whole for the man of God that God has for you if you don't take the time after a breakup and relax and get to and stay on your face before God? Because sometimes we have broken things in our life and 
situations that we don't deal with from the previous relationship and we take that baggage and we go into another relationship and then we'll ruin the thing that God has for us. So my point is that, but then that, um, that time of giving that gentleman that I'm talking about, I talked to him for about a year and a half. I didn't see him, you know, after he prayed for a job that would give him Sundays off, he still wasn't going to church. So to me, that showed me that you were not really serious about your relationship with God because a relationship with God causes you to spend time with him privately and consistently, consistently. And when you do that, the Bible says, when, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And the word of God tells us as believers that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. How can you be healed as a man or as a woman of God and you don't even go to church? So when I started, God started, I, I prayed and I said, Lord, show me if this is the man that you have for me. And when you pray for that, you better be doggone ready to receive the answer if you truly are a person that hears from God. And I believe that I am. And so God started showing me that he wasn't going to church. He, would find, he wouldn't find the time to make for me. He said he was doing this and he was doing that. He made time for everything except for me. And when he did make time for me, it wasn't um, consistent. And so, you know, it hurt me to go a year and a half. And I'm like, you done held out this long. You told me you was willing to take the celibacy journey with me. You knew the end goal was marriage and you still did what you did. So for me, it was just accepting the no that God allowed and to understand that God had something better for me. I am not bitter over the circumstances. Was I disappointed? Yes. Nobody wants to go into something and put a, a year and a half, let alone eight years into something and don't, you know, get what they really uh, thought they were going to get out, which is marriage for me um, and a companion to spend the rest of my life with. And so I didn't get that. But this is what I do realize, that when you do things God's way now this time around, because I didn't get into bed with somebody, I was able to get over that relationship a little bit quicker. Um, because not that I didn't love the person, but because I did not have soul ties when it came to being intimate with them in the bed. So I believe that the peace of God allowed me to walk through that circumstance because I was willing to be obedient to God. And I feel like every no that I get when it comes to a, a, a relationship is one step closer to my yes. One step closer to the man of God that God does have for me. Because I believe the prophetic that's been on my life that God is going to send me a man after his own heart. I believe that. And I'm going to live my life like a wife now so that when he does come that I'm prepared. I know Facebook may be acting up, especially because I haven't seen no comments. I'm going to cut this to an end, and I'm going to come back on here so that I can encourage those of you that are women of God and men of God that you have decided to do things God's way. It has not been easy. It feels like a lonely place. It feels like that you ain't got nobody. I encourage you to stand firm on what the word of God says. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, to be not weary in well-doing for in due season. And due season means that at God's appointed time, not yours. If you, uh, you don't quit, you will reap if you faint not. And I do believe that if we stand hold to the promises of God, that he will always give us what the desires of our heart, not only the desires of our heart, he'll give us exactly what we need. Because sometimes we think, that we um, need things and God knows that it's a danger to us so we have to trust his will over our own and know that it's not okay to settle if they're not going after God if they lazy if they not being consistent if they got girlfriends and boyfriends I mean come on this is is, is relationship 101 but believe it or not some people are longing for love so much that they are willing to do the unthinkable and things that God are not pleased with and they want to go out to the club and find somebody and they want to go out to places that there is it's not a holy situation and even though you can meet somebody at the movies or things at uh, different places like that don't be so caught up that you done met somebody and you done met them in the wrong place because that ain't God God is a God of order but the devil know what you like too and so he'll send someone in disguise that looks okay and that this and that and the third. And then he'll open up a can of disaster on you. So that's why it's important to be obedient to what God says to do. Because if you do that, then 
God will reward you accordingly. There are rewards in being obedient. Um, I love you guys. I said I was going to cut off because I don't think that you guys can respond or you can actually hear the video because there are problems with Facebook. So I'm going to come to a close and we'll be back on here to talk about relationships, okay? And stand pure before the Lord and waiting on him to send that right person for you. You deserve it. All right. Fit for the King. God bless you. Bye-bye.